Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Asia Palm Oil Magazine webinar, which is titled Driving Job Precision Agriculture in Malaysia's Palm Oil Industry. I am Vanny, the MC of today. I wish everyone is having a great day and in a good health. So I am grateful that we can gather in this webinar today, together with some our together with our industry experts to provide some professional opinions about today's topic. Job precision agriculture can address various technical issues within the palm in the palm plantation, such as identifying problems, monitoring changes, and managing variability. This webinar aims to bring a better idea and understanding to the audience on geographic information system, GIS, technology, and its benefit to Malaysia's palm oil industry. Audience will also have some insights on the current issues and predictions in the nation's palm oil industry. So let's hear from the experts on their take on the subject matter in this session. So for your information, this webinar is organized by the Asia Palm Oil Magazine team. And it is also in partnership with Fireworks Trade Media and Asia Webinars. And for information, s Malaysia is the exclusive sponsor of this webinar. And ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce our speakers. First of all, we have Dr. Ahmad Parvis bin Gulam Kadir, Director General of the Malaysian Palm Oil Board, MPOB. Dr. Ahmad, you may introduce yourself to the audience. Yeah. Hi. Uh, Assalamualaikum. I'm Ahmad Parvis, the Director General of MPOB. And uh, we at MPOB, we basically, uh, we are the regulator of the oil industry. So we do R&D of uh, in every kind of R&D from upstream to downstream. And we also regulate the industry in terms of uh, enforcement, licensing. So basically the whole spectrum of the industry from upstream to downstream uh, is within the, the, the uh, responsibility of MPOB. Thank you, Vinny. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad. Okay, so next we will invite next speaker, Mr. Lok Ying Ping, Senior Consultant Industry from S3 Malaysia. Mr. Lok, you may introduce yourself to the audience. Hi. Hi, everyone. This is Lok here uh, from uh, S3 Malaysia, attached with the uh, Enterprise Consulting Teams. So we actually provide solution into the agriculture uh, sector. So uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Look. Next, we have Mr. Mohammad Zafrullah Salim, who will be representing Slime Darby Plantation Research Sundrian Bahad. He is a scientist from R&D Precision Agriculture Unit. Mr. Mohammad Zafrullah, you may introduce yourself to the audience. Hi, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Mohammad Zafrullah Salim, and I'm a scientist uh, in R&D Precision Agriculture Unit. And basically, Precision Agriculture Unit uh, role is to provide a reliable geospatial solution to Sam W plantation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mohamed Zafrula. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions for the speakers during the webinar, you may share them at the Q&A panel. I mean, you share your questions at the Q&A panel, okay? The questions will be answered by the speakers or panelists accordingly. And we are also having a Q&A session to answer some questions from the audience given registration. Plus, good news to all the participants as you will get to join a lucky draw to win a free gift, which is Jabra 85T earbuds prepared by Ashley Malaysia. So stay tuned until the end of the webinar to know how. Okay, hey, without further ado, I will pass to Dr. Ahmad Parviz, the Director General of Malaysia Plant Oil Board, to start the first presentation, which is titled Location Intelligence in Precision Agriculture. Dr. Ahmad, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Benny. Okay, again, uh, Assalamualaikum. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. And uh, yep, let me. Okay, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the, the organizer for inviting MPOB to share some of our experience in terms of uh, 
looking at uh, uh, what we call precision agriculture. So I'm going to share with you some of our effort in terms of what we call location intelligence in uh, precision agriculture and some of the effort that at MPOB and how do we actually we assist the, the industry, especially the smallholders. So basically the outline of my presentation, I'll be talking about the, uh, just a very brief introduction about the industry and then the concept of precision agriculture. I'm sure most of you are already aware who are an expert in this field. And then uh, some of the uh, geospatial data development in Olpam, uh, that what we are doing. And also the application of geospatial technology in Olpam uh, industry. And finally, just a very brief uh, conclusion. So basically, I think uh, just uh, for information, I think the, the uh, Malaysia remains the, the world largest producer of oil and fat. I think we account around 8% of the total global oil and fat uh, production. We, we are talking about the whole 16 or 17 type of oil and fats. And uh, we as a major player uh, in, in oil and fat, uh, we export around 17.37 million ton of palm oil last year, which represent around 18.3% of the total global uh, oil and fat. We're talking about production. I mean, last year, we produced around 26% of the whole total 73.74 million ton produced, uh, palm oil produced in the world. And of course, the biggest chunk coming from Indonesia. And in terms of export, we, we, we export 34% of the whole 50, 50 million ton of palm oil that has been exported. So we can see comparing Malaysia and Indonesia, we are more in, in export rather than uh, our local consumption. And uh, this is basically our planted area. So basically up to the data that we have until December last year, there are around 5.8 million hectares of oil palm planted. You can see on your right hand side where the Around uh, the blue color basically shows that around 72% uh, are basically covered by the plantation. And then we have around the 16%, the, the one, the cake in green color basically uh, is this independent smallholders. And there's another around 11 or 12% of the organized smallholders under various uh, scheme. And at the same time, you can also see the, the three uh, images based on our GPS data and mapping that we are doing in MPOB. So we are basically showing that where are these all palm planted. The difference is that, I mean, whatever you can see on the, uh, the license, the, what the, the 5.86 million hectares is basically based on our licensing data. Uh, basically, these are all mature area. People only get licensed when they want to sell their oil pump. Whereas the, the, the maps are basically this is where, whenever you plant, the moment you plant, we can detect that, then we will start putting the map. So that means the area on the map will be larger than the, the uh, planted or licensed area. So basically, the uh, challenge uh, faced by the oil palm industry, of course, there's, there are a lot of challenges. So some of them, of course, which is very severe now, is dependent of labor. So I think definitely precision agriculture will help us a lot uh, in, in, in resolving some of the problem with labor. As I think there's a lot of report now with the, the COVID, the closure of, of borders and whatnot. I think we, we have a, a severe issues of labor shortage. And we also have seen that the uh, production also have been reducing for, for a couple of months now. And of course, uh, we have also issue with the uh, less fertile land. I mean, we, we are basically uh, exhausted with whatever land that we have. So we have to basically use whatever land that we have and try to increase the yield from the available land. And then I think one of the, the, the challenge that we, we have now actually is to how to interpret the yield map uh, for site-specific management uh, to identify and understanding the casual factors in, uh, influencing the variability of oil palm yield, as we can see throughout the country. So, of course, the challenge is that how to increase the uh, crop yield and profit. I think the yield, if you have seen for the past 20, 30 years, I think the yield has been stagnating. And, and unfortunately, for the past two, three years also, it's slowly start uh, declining. So this is not really a good sign in terms of sustainability of the industry. And of course, uh, also how to optimize our field input, fertilizer, pesticide, etc. So this is where precision agriculture come in. And of course, the, this also help to minimize the environmental uh, impact. I think now the industry has been, been accused a lot on, on environmental issues. And of course, finally, also important for, for, for the businesses actually how to reduce your production costs while in that indirectly you will increase your profit and make it you more sustainable. So basically, uh, in order to, to move forward, we, we use all these emerging technologies that are available. I mean, this is what MPOB have, have sort of uh, proposed around six, five, six years ago. Uh, 
uh, the way forward. So, but one of the one of the big things besides we're looking at productivity, food and nutrition, all your chemical, blah blah blah, value addition. But Internet of Things and also precision agriculture are two main important things that the way forward that we have to look. I mean, of course, the other issues on the mechanization, but I'm not going to dis discuss that. But this is where important of uh, gathering all the big data uh, I, with the Internet of Things and artificial intelligence, uh, which is important uh, to improve our precision agriculture, where we could actually make it more efficient and more sustainable. And of course, this use a lot of uh, technologies like you use drone technology. We will show some of how we use those in our industry. I mean, uh, our research. And then artificial neutral, uh, neural uh, network, hyperspectral remote sensing, robotics, and uh, RFID. So these are some of the, the things, uh, technology that uh, is important uh, for the way forward with industry. And just a very briefly, I think the, the definition of precision agriculture is basically you just gather, process, and analyze all the temporal, uh, special, as well as individual data, and then combine it to help you to, to support in management decision where finally you would like to 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 uh, efficiently uh, to increase your to to, uh, to increase your efficiency productivity quality of course it, it end up with a profitability and finally sustainability so this is how people are using precision agriculture and or, and this is also sometimes known as site specific farming i mean like in the, in the medical so we have now personal medicine so now this also in, in farming, we cannot just generally use any recommendation of fertilizer everywhere throughout the country. There's, there's no such thing. So this is where the precision agriculture will come in. So technologies such as GIS, GPS, remote sensing are all important to improve our agricultural practices. So at the end of the day, when we, we go into uh, use of the precision agriculture, it helps us to, to uh, the potential to increase our yield as well as our economic return from the uh, investment. So I think it also covers uh, the whole spectrum, the whole aspect, look at the agronomy activity, mechanization, pest and disease monitoring, as well as uh, geospatial mapping. And of course, this is also very important in terms of pre-planning of plantation. For like example, when you want to, whether you need to include terracing and whatnot. So this is also very important, uh, especially when we also do your replanting and whatnot, also important to, to have all this data. And initial work uh, for, for precision agriculture requires uh, basically to, to data. And this is what you have built up uh, the plantation database. You need to gather all this information. And you also need to, to come up with site specific uh, fertilizer recommendation based on the foliar nutrient analysis and yield. This is what we're going to share with you later, some of the example. And of course, it's also uh, improve our economic analysis. And also, uh, it's quite important to also. Uh, to, 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 to assess the risk at the early stage by using precision agriculture. So these are basically the, the cycle uh, of precision agriculture. So you basically involve the data acquisition. This is where you, you collect million and million of data. And then this is, then later you, you go into analysis or analyze the data using various technologies. And this is where you extract the, the information from, from the, the data. And this helps you in terms of uh, to, 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 to support, I mean, decision uh, to support your uh, decision system. And um, as well as also it helps you to, to determine what kind of the required, uh, what we call the um, machinery, the, the, vari I mean, the various, I mean, the variable uh, rate treatment, as well as agriculture input, the different type of, as well as the amount of fertilizer and timing of fertilizer application. So, it's just that basically help you to, to, to do the right thing in the right place and at the right time. And, um, oh, is that, uh, okay, so basically uh, tools for uh, what we call precision agriculture, because you need all these tools. Uh, you need the GPS, GIS, and of course in MPOB, we develop what we call a, a OPRIS, All Palm Resource Information System which I will share with you all uh, later. And then uh, we also have remote sensing, drone image. Uh, I mean, uh, what we feel spectrometer and so on. And of course, you also need to have the data from yield, I mean, to, to collect the uh, data from yield monitoring, mapping, variable rate, fertilizer application, and so on. 
So this is something like some of the data that how uh, you need to acquire. You look at the, maybe that like this is one of our plantation. So we look at the, uh, do the mapping of the oil palm block planted. And then we also do mapping of the uh, oil palm age, the census, whether you are looking at the, any disease or even you're talking about uh, pest disease uh, in, 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 in the, the, uh, the area and you do the census. And then you also look at the, uh, slope, planting design, and so on. So all these data are all been been uh, put together, and this is where we we, we come up with what we call the all palm resources uh, resource information system, or, or in short, OPRIS. So this is where we 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 put. Uh, it's all based on uh, GIS specific uh, functionality for scientific investigation, resource management, and development planning of all palm industry. So this is all where we we. We put together the web mapping, web application, web application, and a mobile application, and finally you have the the the, the whole uh, system uh, to assist us in the the uh, planting of all palm, and uh, of course um, it also contain what we call this uh, specific map function and so on. So this is an example one of the, the some of the data that we have. We look at for example this map shows the the uh, integration of the site yield potential. Uh, the peatland area, uh, palm oil land use, agricultural meeting information, and so on. So there's a very uh, contested information inside there, which of course the, the, the expert will be able to do, go there and then extract and get the right information to assist you into uh, how to perform the, the uh, precision agriculture. And uh, basically, uh, it's also important for, for the uh, you're talking about about uh, land preparation. I mean, example, you, you are going to apply what the the uh, mechanization in the plantation. So it's very important to have this data. So from the mapping of the whole area, then you you will know uh, the which area are suitable, which are not suitable, and also what kind of machineries and equipment need to be to be brought in uh, in order to 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 uh, operate in in this particular. Uh, condition or this new plant area that you're going to plant and also help you in terms of determining the, the budget uh, for, for basically uh, operating in this area. And um, okay, you, you can also do what we call, um, we also do the zoning, uh, looking at the oil palm uh, site yield potential. So this is where I think um, we, we, have, we, we collect the data from uh, various palm oil uh, age from different place and whatnot. So from what you can see on this map, it shows the, uh, in, uh, the uh, based on the soil, agroclimatic, agro as well as the topography information. And what is shown there is the, the uh, site yield potential. So those with the darker color shows you there are the higher yield. I mean, the, the, the darkest one will be more than 40 ton per hectare per, per, per year. And obviously the, the lighter color will basically have a uh, lower uh, potential in terms of yield. So this is very important in terms of determining uh, the planted area so that you can get higher yield. I, obviously, you can see from here, uh, Sabah shows the, the highest area. And, and of course, we know that Sabah also producing the highest uh, amount of CPO uh, currently in, in, in the country. And uh, this also how about the implementation of the precision agriculture uh, in terms of uh, in, in, in plantation. This is an example for the fertilizer application. So from the data that we have from the information on the ground, then we know when and uh, what type of fertilizer to use and also the quantity of fertilizer uh, to, to be used. So in terms of the uh, yield monitoring and also helping you to get the, the what they call the site yield potential as well. So this is where we, we gather the information. This is uh, the, the data to show that mean uh, yield changes over time. You can see the data is from year 2001 to 2016. So all the six years we have all the data. So we only look, we also look at the, the yield as well as the foliar or, or nutrient status of the, uh, all these different sites. And uh, of course we, uh, we, we use the, what we call our open system, uh, all palm efficient nutrient system uh, to gather all this information. And this will help us to uh, maximum or to maximize our uh, site, yield, site yield potential. And uh, this is one also example of a special, uh, what we got interpolation map of uh, yield and uh, our foliar nutrient. So this is where uh, example, 
where we know the data of the yield and also the status of the nutrient, like example, in this case, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So we know which are sufficient or which is in excess, which is not sufficient. So this uh, will help you to, to uh, give you information about the potential yield. But of course, the yield is not only purely dependent on uh, what we call um, nutrient, but also other factors like, like I mean, the, the pest and disease, uh, weather condition and whatnot. But the, the soil condition are basically, or the nutrient condition are majorly, basically the major uh, role uh, plays in, in, in terms of giving you the, 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 the right yield. And uh, of course, this is also some of the, uh, info, I mean, example of the uh, yield and foliar status. I mean, this is something that we have done in our own uh, uh, station in, in, in Pahang. So we have looked at the, the yield for in 2014 and 16. And so we look at the, the 35 different points and look at the different, uh, what we call the uh, nutrient. And then from this, all this data that we gather will help us uh, in terms of how to uh, proper plan our, our uh, what we call planting in, in uh, this specific site. And this information is also important in terms of how we could actually advise the, the industry. And then, of course, uh, it's also involved with the, what we call the variable uh, rate fertilizer map. So, of course, these are all important. I mean, this uh, after you gather all your information from the various uh, from the, the different type of what we call uh, nutrient, like in this case, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium. So once you know the status of this uh, nutrient condition in this, uh, uh, in this different, uh, this area, then you know what are the right uh, fertilizer, what the amount required. It doesn't mean that maybe we are going to, to, to apply the same amount to everywhere. So this is very, very important. It guides us to make sure that we, we apply the, uh, the right rate of uh, fertilizer at the right place and um, and also they mean to make sure that we get the, the efficient or the, the highest or the maximum uh, FFB production. And uh, in terms of based on this uh, experience and also data that we have gathered, we, we, we then move to how we can assist uh, the industry. In this case, we are trying to assist the industry looking at their, to develop the site yield potential for estate and then as well as helping the smallholders through especially to MSPO and we can also help to map the MSPO certification scheme on the whole uh, in, in the country as well as I think the most important for the smallholders is that we manage and we help in mapping as well as develop and assist them in good agriculture practices for the uh, smallholders uh, in the plantation uh, in, especially in their farm so this is one example we apply uh, the application of geospatial for agronomy and fertilizer recommendation to estate and smallholders. So this is some uh, of our effort and these are some of the data. I'm not going to go into detail due to the time constraint, but this is some of what we are doing on the ground. And also this is, uh, of course, where all this data has been, been put together. We have a dashboard to, to monitor the, um, all the, the, the various parts that where we have been uh, working on. So this is something uh, very important, have good, strong, uh, what we call uh, IT facilities to support. And I think the other important thing is actually uh, in terms of agronomy practices, this is where we develop a, a, what we call our oil palm uh, agronomy center or, or park. Uh, we have three centers in, in Terengganu, Johor, as well as Sabah. So this is where we uh, help growers in obtaining the optimum economic uh, FFB yield through practicing good agriculture practices as well as the applying appropriate balanced fertilizer. So this is very important based on, based on our uh, mapping information that we have on the soil condition and whatnot. So we could actually help. Of course, we are doing it for free for the smallholders, but uh, at a very small uh, charge for the industry. But like example, we're looking at the soil and foliar, we do soil and foliar sampling, and then we do the chemical analysis for the plant, soil and fertilizer. And then uh, we, do, we, we also do agronomy and advisory uh, visits. And uh, of course, uh, apply or, or recommend systematic fertilizer recommendation basically to the smallholders. So we, this is something that we, we just basically started and we uh, now try to, get more equipment for our, our three labs that we have. So this will help. Uh, we have the, the ge geography uh, or the GIS data. So now it's more on the ground or soil sampling that we are doing and also doing the lab analysis. So this is where we are going to expand more of this facility to the, the industry. 
And then, of course, we also now using uh, this technology for, for controlling the, uh, especially bedworm. So one of the technology that we, we developed and we just, uh, I think, introduced to industry last year is the, what we call auto bag, uh, a sensor to, I mean, uh, uh, sensors to detect the bedworm. So basically, through this technology, we can actually distinguish between life and death, uh, what we call life of the bedworm. So this is still a uh, work in progress. We are still improving it and then try to, to make it maybe to attach to drone and whatnot. So we could actually uh, using this technology that we can, we can later just have the drone uh, going above the canopy. And then from there, we can know which area have been affected. And, and the most important is that knowing the, the right stage of the uh, larvae or, or as well as a pupae, life and death, that will also will, will tell us where is the right time for us to apply the bacillus to the genesis. Uh, to, to control the, the, the bedworm. So these are still um, in, in progress and uh, we hope to, to soon uh, really finalize this and then have a system ready to, to really control the bedworm. And I think certain parts like Pera and Johor, we have serious problem of uh, this bedworm infestation. And of course, we're also using drone and whatnot also to, con I mean, to, to do sensors to look at the uh, bedworm out, uh, outbreak. So the, all the red dots are basically area where we have the uh, bedworm up, uh, outbreak. And then we're also looking at area where we have put on uh, the biological control. So we need to, to, to put more of this biological control, especially beneficial plant and whatnot, to, to uh, reduce the, uh, the repeated, what we call incidence of uh, bedworm. So this is something that uh, in progress and we are using technology basically uh, to control bedworm. And what we also now also in, in the pipeline is also to uh, integrate basically using what we call a hyperspectral image for Ganoderma basal stem rot uh, disease detection. So uh, one of our, I mean, we have a few officers here uh, looking at this uh, technology. Uh, we're using what we call object-based image analysis obia. Uh, so to suggest the detection and the moderate as well as severe Ganoderma disease infection. So we have the uh, and this is around 90% uh, accurate, where you can actually do early detection of the uh, Ganoderma infection in the in the uh, our plantation. So this is quite important. I mean, always when we know it's quite severe. So now we want to to get as early as possible. We're using uh, this technology. Later we can attach it to a drone, and it can just go above the canopy, and then can tell us, okay, these are part of the area where you know where there are very high incidence of Ganoderma. We can tell which are the plant uh, are really early stage of, of, of uh, infection. Then we could actually do some, uh, what we call curative, uh, what we call, uh, or at least we can do the mitigation to control the, the, the Ganoderma by using injection or whatnot. So, so these are some of the example of how we use this uh, special technologies as well as all the image technologies, all the new technologies uh, towards uh, precision agriculture in the in, in the oil palm industry to to ensure that I mean uh, we could actually assist in the long run how that we can uh, fully implement what we call precision agriculture in the industry. So I think uh, uh, in 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 conclusion, I would like to sorry to, to rush because of the limited time that we have. So basically, uh, we we are trying to adapt the what we call geospatial technology uh, in oil palm plantation to assist uh, decision making process and effective management. So basically. It's all basically gathering uh, various data from various location, various uh, soil condition, various uh, data that we have from various sources, putting them together. This is where you need a lot of uh, mobile as well as uh, what we call high tech uh, IT uh, facilities to assist you to put them together. And then this is where we come up with this, uh, what we call uh, precision agriculture technology that to help us to, to, to basically to move forward the industry more sustainably and uh, where we, we can reduce our input, we can increase our output, and then we, we can actually reduce a lot of wastage and whatnot by through doing the right rate of application of fertilizer, the right time of uh, applying the, uh, what we call controlling of the disease or in pests. And of course, finally, that uh, will help us to, to even plan before we do a new round of replanting and also uh, finally, we, we can actually min maximize our uh, outcome or as well as income from the industry. And obviously, I think that will always 
make sure that our oil palm industry already remain uh, sustainable. Okay, with that, uh, thank you so much for, for your kind uh, attention. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad. Thank you very much for interesting sharing. Oh, interesting. Technology is very incredible, I guess, because it could help to improve our work efficiency. Am I right? So next, we will move to the Q&A session. And for your information, these questions were collected from the audience open registration. So Dr. Ahmad, we have first question here. For future planning, will there be any subsidy to be provided by MPOB to encourage the industry to invest in the technology? Okay, that's a very good question. And uh, I think currently there, there's, there's, there's no, no such uh, what we call uh, what we call a subsidy or whatever fund provided. In fact, I think MPOB, so we are still struggling. But it also depends on our depend on government uh, financial strength as also uh, demand from the, the consumer uh, or the plantation. But I think currently, I think basically for, for most of the big players, I guess uh, now with the very good price, I think as we know, the price is now very high. I think in 18 May this year, we, the price reaches uh, 3,700, no, sorry, 4,773, uh, which is record uh, high. So I think, and a lot of companies are actually uh, making a lot of profit. So I think for, for big players, it's very high time that for them to invest in this technology. I think that with the, the uh, profit they are making. Of course, for the smallholders, MPOB will have to, as we, we've been working on it, we are developing the technology and we will uh, continue to assist them uh, in, by using this technology. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, is it done for first question? Yeah, right. So, now let's. Like Next will be the second question from audience. Are there any efforts by MPOB to produce planting material with a long stock OP fruit bunch? Okay, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think long stock is one of the, the, the way forward in terms of, I mean, uh, assisting in harvesting. I think now we know we have uh, issues with labor shortage. And also, I think uh, harvesting. I think that there, there are a lot of. Even I think recently we 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 are working. Uh, we just established what we call uh, Markov, the um, mechanization and automation research uh, of all palm consortium, uh, to to basically solve the issue of harvesting. So obviously, I think long stock is something that a length of between what we call. Uh, we are basically looking at some of our planting material. I mean, because we got a lot of what we call. Uh, all palm that we collected from from more than 20, almost 20 countries from uh, different part of the world so basically we thought long stock which have around 10 to 15 cm uh, in length and uh, we have some especially from the angolian material that have uh, that this kind of characteristic and in fact i think we mpob have already introduced to industry what we call our mpob palm series uh, 10 or ps10 which is available. So any industry members who are actually interested could actually uh, contact MPOB and we, we can see how we could actually share some of this material and people can start uh, planting this oil palm, uh, what we call this uh, PS10, uh, which can produce a bunch with uh, the stock length of around 28 to 36 cm. So this will be very something very useful in terms of uh, uh, is to, to issue in harvesting. Of course, as an important commodity as well as, per, uh, as a perennial nature, this promise, promising long stock material still need to undergo further round of yield improvement to achieve the commercial uh, worthiness, probably another 10 years as they are currently still under experiment. So, so knowing all palm, of course, once you plant it, you will be there for 25 years. So you to get the 25 years benefit, you have to invest in time because once you have, it is not like you plant today and tomorrow you get the result. So this is the, the, the patient required, but definitely there are something uh, in the pipeline that we could actually assist the industry with uh, long stock. Hey, yep. I guess good things always work for weight, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> third question. Where could we find the urge for precision agriculture within the palm oil industry? Okay, basically, uh, I think uh, we, we can actually use this precision agriculture in like, example during replanting work. Uh, I think now, now we do a lot of replanting. 
uh, uh, pre-planning of uh, planting design. I mean, for, for big players, I mean, that when you want to do replanting, then you can also help you in uh, planting design. I'm sure you are using, try maybe to do some studies on fertilizer, uh, I mean, fertilizer application and whatnot, and also help you in terms of slope and terrace mapping. So, because for example, you have an area which is very hilly and whatnot, so this particular culture can help you based on the mapping, you can help you to, 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 to design and create your own slope as well as a terrace. And this will help you in terms of uh, when you plant later, you will have no, no issue with uh, harvesting and evacuating your FFB. And of course, uh, as we also demonstrated to the end, the disease and pest uh, detection and monitoring can also uh, be, be done using this, uh, what we call precision agriculture. Obviously, uh, biomass, tree counting, and uh, land use, uh, land cover cropping, uh, cover crop mapping and whatnot can also be, be done. In fact, we are also using a lot of our GIS now. This uh, uh, to actually, in fact, we are, we are still at MPOB. We are near at, at the, finally at the final stage of actually uh, doing the mapping of the whole oil palm planted in Malaysia. Because from what I say, we have around 5.9 million hectare uh, oil palm planted based on our license. But what we are doing, our team is now working seriously. Of course, we have the, the satellite data, then we have to do the actual mapping. And finally, uh, we will get the whole data and we will be able to, to map the whole oil palm planted area in, in Malaysia overall. That means including a license as well as unlicensed or, or area that are yet to be licensed. Because currently, those oil palm planted which are less than three years old, they, 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 they does not really have a license yet because they are not uh, selling the fruit yet. So they, they are not in our, our data but they are already planters. For three years old, you can still detect them. So this is where uh, we are also using this very, uh, what we call, uh, sensitively uh, to come up with our, uh, the map, which the government would like us to, to actually uh, publish it so that the, the, the whole world can see our all palm planted area. That's all? Yeah, only three questions uh from uh chosen so now thank you very much Dr. Amma, for your interesting sharing and i guess everyone you get to open up your eyesight right how interesting is it like how incredible technology could help in improving our working performance so next let us welcome mr luke Inping from s3 malaysia for his presentation titled driving digital oil palm plant operations in malaysia so mr luke the floor is yours Okay, thank you, Vedi. Let me share my screen. So just checking, everyone see my screen? I can see your screen now. Yep. Okay. So thanks again, Benny, and I appreciate the introduction. Salam sejahtera, sejahtera untuk semua. A very good evening to everyone. So again, my, you, my name is Luke Inping here. You can call me Luke. I'm currently attached with Esri, the world leading just partial solution provider, and specifically to Esri Malaysia, the distributor of RGIS system in Malaysia. So it, this is a great pleasure for me to participate in this webinar and speaking with you all. So for the topic of today's sharing, we will talk about what is just partial and uh, precision agriculture and how this solution can drive digital oil palm operation in Malaysia. Our work in GIS is actually simple, uh, creating, applying, and understanding. We help users in creating data they want to monitor, applying analysis, and make understanding on the reality. So the effect that we actually produce is actually big uh, because the user can actually make better decision on this. So before we go deeper to the oil palm uh, solution, let me share with you our uh, 20, uh, 2021 vision on GIS is actually a creating a sustainable future. It's all happened here. Everything we've ever known done, loved, took place on this drifting, spinning ball that's our home. 
It's where we learned to provide, nurture, protect, thrive. And yet, wildfires are scorching the West Coast, leaving behind a path of death and destruction. The waters keep rising, and according to the National Weather Service, our very success now threatens our future. Today, our greatest challenge is to learn how to grow while sustaining what sustains us. Your understanding, your science, your work are the solution. You have the power to see patterns and relationships and show us how everything and everyone are connected. You have the power to transform how we produce and consume, build, and maintain, unite, and strengthen, heal, and nurture. You can help us see that we can no longer live apart from nature, but must live as part of it. Today, geography matters more than ever. The geographic approach your work and the billions of maps you make are essential for creating a more sustainable future. And yes, JS is actually helping users to creating a sustainable future. So back to the context of oil palm industry, we all know that under the national agenda, oil palm today is moving towards sustainable development. And every planter needs to get their MSPO certification and adopting the best management practices for them in order for them to continue in their businesses. We see today a lot of plantation company and operator from government GLC to private sector, from big organization to smallholder. Most of them are finding ways to digitalize, transform the organization, especially in this pandemic time. So the aim for digital transformation is to let the industry become smarter. And your business activity is being operated and monitored more and more in real time. So the focus of digital transformation may vary from one company to another. However, this often boils down to the key driver, adoption of the reliable smart farming system. So what is the smart farming system? In the, in, in the industry revolution 4.0, you see a lot of data uh, we actually generate uh, from everywhere. So look at the entire value chain of oil palm operation. Data could be generated from drone, area survey, from the field, mobile apps, from the real-time IoT sensor, on the big data analytics, as well as generated from the data science using, using the modeling and deep learning. And more than 98% of this uh, plantation data collected with location element. We want to know what is happening where. And you need one system that can manage all this type of data in one place. Geospatial mapping technology, they applying geographic, uh, geographic approach in GIS, geographic information system, is well adopted globally as an effective tool in precision agriculture. This to generate insight, driving your business operation. So we named this geospatial technology as an ArcGIS system. It's, it is a science of where. So ArcGIS technology is a common framework for collaborating and problem solving. Web mapping technology engage and interconnect everyone from your user in a state using the mobile device to your organization using desktop and web, as well as to other stakeholders that access your information from public web. 
So our GIS system provide us with a framework and the process for creating and applying geographic knowledge, the foundation of our work. It's allow user to work with different kind of data. For example, as, as you uh, have been uh, have heard just now, IoT data, satellite imagery, 3D data, structural and unstructured data, and so forth. And all this data was collected, analyzed for us to understand it in a collect collaborative way, and then put it into an action. This is the power of GIS and the power of geography driven to make a better decision. And this technology is continue evolving and innovated. It's the powerful, it's a powerful tool for GIS professional and as well as for the general user. It helps you to assess network uh, of distributed use service and content to modeling, being able to publish and share. Advancing uh, hang in hand with all types of technology, as you, as you can see already, imagery and remote sensing application on the Geo AI uh, and machine learning framework, advanced spatial analytics and big data analytics, as well as integrate with enterprise uh, system. So under the Geo uh, agriculture plantation sector, uh, actually, uh, we have also uh, uh, craft some job, uh, job precision agriculture solution. There are many use cases developed using the market leading uh, RGS software. But today, due to the time limitation, uh, we'll run through uh, these six fundamental areas that we foresee plantation owner can rapidly uh, deploy the application for precision farming. These are the precision farming, uh, uh, job precision farming solution for land management harvesting monitoring, uh, replanting planning, uh, water management on the sustainability and agronomy. Then you will notice there is a QR code at the bottom of the uh, slide. Uh, stay tuned until the end of this presentation for an opportunity to join SRI Malaysia team to put a consultant consultation on one to one of this topic. So let us just move to the first solution quickly. So the first one is job precision land management. So we all understand that the most important asset in plantation is the land and the farm itself. The land management solution is actually to move your land detail and planting statistics from the paper base or Excel format to the cloud platform. So this is in order for you to easily uh, assess um, by your user, by everyone, anytime and anywhere. Land, land detail is actually referring to your area statement on your, uh, for example, on the land size, planted and planted area. Where, uh, so where are the dispute area and et cetera. Planting uh, statistic is actually re uh, referring to your palm density, stem paha, your year of planting, palm age, and et cetera. So all this will be uh, made available inside this solution. So when, when the web map and data is accessible in the cloud, it make uh, the user easier to actually bring down to the field. So they can bring the map work offline inside your plantation and easy for user uh, uh, to do field auditing, as well as uh, we can also use this as an MSBO internal and civilian audit. So Genting is actually uh, one of our counterpart. They are actually using the solution to manage their land owner data. So land location and ownership Ownership is actually easily identified. So to avoid a duplicated uh, land, land rental uh, payment. So that's, that's actually save million of ring, uh, ringgit of, uh, for this operation. There are many possibilities to expand the solution to cover other data. Uh, so our another counterpart, TSH Plantation, have developed the land management web map to include asset man maintenance on the road repair, graveling, uh, cover inventory, low bridge maintenance, infra inspection, uh, soil profile and agronomy. So everything is actually in one page. So they can actually monitor closely on all these uh, expenses in, uh, in the cloud system. So uh, of course we have, uh, uh, we can include also the weather IoT data using the API. Later you will hear from Sindabi on the experience in enriching, enrich, enriching land data with whether IoT for disease prognosis and application. So the second solution is 
uh, the most important plantation activity of harvesting. So effective uh, field data collection application using easy to configure smartphone without the need for you to know any programming language, you can actually configure a smartphone to collect the field data. So productivity uh, indicator will be summarized into an interactive dashboard. And you could quickly retrieve data based on selection. So you could uh, uh, do the selection uh, to, to, to find the production data by your zone, by your country, and by uh, et cetera. So all the, all the uh, summarized figure will be actually recalculated based on your selection. So related uh, historical production trend is actually important for you to identify the gap for production. And effective coordinate, uh, coordination between the harvesting activity with your farm fleet management is actually another way uh, to increase your uh, uh, production, production uh, uh, collection. So in uh, some of the user, they are actually integrate with their business intelligence tool, such as their ERP, SAP system. So the third solution uh, that we, we, we are sharing today is to generate your replanting design blueprint in the digital twin before your actual implementation. So using the drone capability, now today you can actually quickly bring back the thousand of the uh, area images uh, in the short time and on demand. So time counting is something that you can use uh, geo AI capability from our system uh, to, uh, to, to count where is the pump. And this can be formed uh, for future failing and uh, chipping clamp. So access to your road and brand density to add addition uh, so that you will know uh, whether your rock is actually surplus or actually you need to add on some more. So you could uh, work with a different scenario uh, for the replanting design quickly. Uh, for, um, so for example here, uh, what would be the density if I would like to have a planting distance uh, of 8.5 instead of nine meter. So you can actually work out a different scenario quickly uh, in the digital twin without, need, without the need for you to try and error on the ground. So you can run uh, and rerun again the replanting design model so that you will achieve an optimum economical return for the next uh, your 25 years uh, uh, planting. And most important thing is to bring all the design again uh, back to the field. So uh, the design will actually serve as a basic and benchmark uh, for your field uh, lining assistant. So uh, move on, uh, let, let's, let us look at the, uh, the configuration of uh, the apps uh, application that we uh, deal with uh, sustainability. So in, uh, uh, we have a living atlas uh, that providing uh, aqua and terra satellite uh, image on the open burning. So this is for open burning uh, monitoring. If you can scan this uh, QR code, uh, then you can actually go to that uh, application. So then you can see how the thing can be uh, can be monitored and managed. So, and of course the RSPO is also using the RGIS online platform to share their certification area to the public. And also they will get crowdsourcing ability uh, to monitor on the deforestation monitoring. So then they can actually file the grievances and they can actually took some uh, action to monitor, uh, uh, to check, uh, to verify uh, whether the uh, grievances file is actually valid or not. Of course, if you like to handle, uh, to monitor on your water quality data, so uh, data can be actually uh, pumped into the apps, then you benchmark with your national ambient water quality standard. So you can see whether your uh, water performance is actually under the standard 2B set by the DOE. So this is something that will give you uh, immediate alert uh, if some of the data is actually go wrong. Of course, there are some other uh, application like biodiversity assessment and monitoring, uh, health and safety, on the accident reporting and audit. And uh, SignW is also using the platform for them to enrich on the supply chain uh, traceability. So a different kind of uh, application can be configured to serve for your sustainability uh, roadmap. And the fifth uh, solution that we would like to share is on the water management. 
So basically on water is to register your water river and drainage network. So uh, this is important for you to know the flood level and determine the flood impact area with uh, calculate then you in order for you to calculate the exact affected pump. And it is important uh, as, a, as a proof that you can actually use it for insurance claim, for example. And we can do some modeling like a floor uh, accumulation modeling. Uh, so you will know where is your water lock area. And this is important for you to actually redesign your network. And some um, mitigation measure, for example, like brand disuting, bonding construction. So you can actually uh, calculate what is the total length of the <coughs> drain need to be disused and actually uh, total length of uh, bonding that you, are, that you need to actually build to stop the water from coming in. So all this can be uh, calculated uh, in the great detail uh, to form the budget before your actual implementation. So uh, last is actually on the agronomy. And uh, as you can heard just now, MPOV, uh, they have done correlating the soil profile and planting statistics on toward their uh, plantation data. Then you can use that uh, to, uh, uh, easy to configure uh, quick capture apps uh, to collect your pest uh, infestation data for the, from the field observation uh, by actually just touch on the uh, PND uh, sample picture button. That, uh, they allow you to quickly uh, collect uh, where is actually uh, uh, there is an infestation happen on the ground. So it's actually a different way of collecting data to faster uh, your uh, compilation for further analysis. Of course, we can do something on the pump health analysis and land use changes. Uh, and after you have collected so uh, many uh, image on the drone and satellite image, then you might need a system to actually catalog all these images for exploration. And uh, then the uh, agronomists can actually uh, uh, retrieve back uh, what is the baseline uh, images, uh, what, what, uh, what, what is the latest images, and maybe uh, images five years ago, and allow them for to do the uh, desktop study. And uh, so, so this is how we actually uh, uh, design the system and configure in different way to serve your uh, plantation needs. Uh, to conclude on this, uh, GIS um, has been now it become becoming interconnected. Nowadays, a uh, user is actually demanding for plantation uh, data to be assessed not only from your desktop, uh, but it, it need to be hosted in the cloud. Uh, then assess through the web, the apps, and then some of your content and finding abandoned into your portal, as well as, as, well as uh, uh, managed in your enterprise server. So this could be server-to-server uh, -server integration. So in order to capture more data for you to actually uh, generate business insight. And Joe Spatial Technology has built in a common framework uh, for stakeholder engagement. It's a good tool to engage different uh, stakeholders, provide a platform uh, for the team to work closely. It could be from your GIS professional to your subject matter expert, uh, like plantation advisor, agronomist, to your user, state manager, R&D innovation manager, HR manager, mechanization manager, to your IT professional, like data scientist and team management. So the ultimate goal uh, for uh, using the uh, GIS is building a strong foundation uh, on the system of record. Each application uh, able to handle different type of data source and inter interchangeable. Everything is actually on the common platform. So building the system of engagement uh, that enable user from the different department to work together closely. And ultimately, uh, in parallel, uh, building a system of insight, uh, generating a business intelligence through an executive dashboard in, uh, in order to monitor, uh, for example, on your revenue, on your CAPEX, on your OPEX, and also managing your risk. So, uh, and this will actually form the future uh, digital plantation operation. 
So that's all from our sharing today. If you would like to know more on the presented, uh, presented topic, uh, please click on the QR code uh, here. And in order, this, is in, this, this will allow you to register for one to one consult, uh, consultation uh, slot. So just pick uh, one of the uh, six topic uh, that uh, you would like to know further due to the time uh, constraint, we cannot uh, actually elaborate more on this, but uh, you, we can actually uh, discuss closely uh, with you on the available date that you can, uh, uh, you can select from the, for, for your consultation. So alternatively, if you are uh, assessed from your PC, uh, we can actually share the link. Uh, I think the uh, secretary can paste the link into the, uh, chat box so you can actually uh, 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 put the consultation also uh, from this link that uh, it will actually allow you to uh, select a station, uh, station uh, topic that we can actually uh, provide further insight uh, on what we can actually do for you. And uh, that's all. Uh, with this, I hand over back to MC. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Mr. Luke. Thank you for informative sharing. So now we move on to the Q&A session. So the first question, this is the first question. Okay, so how to implement dual AI in the oil palm industry and how much cost is needed to start up this technology? Um, thank you again for the question. So actually the dual AI is it's something that abandoned inside uh, our uh, product. So it's ranging from the desktop uh, to this uh, web and also to the server. So basically, if you are on our desktop, it actually have the capability already to do all this Joy AI and machine, machine learning framework. So it will be uh, no cost. So if you like to know how, uh, uh, after you purchase your desktop uh, or you already have a desktop, if you want to know how this thing can be benefited you, so just uh, give us a call so we can actually do the demo on how this thing can be actually applied uh, for plantation industry. Uh, thank you. Okay, so we have next question. Do we need any additional extensions or could we apply this with the current version for replanting design? Um, yep, thanks again for the question. Uh, yeah, of course, on the second solution on the replanting design, we need an uh, additional extension in order for us to do the modeling and to actually do prediction on where to site the farm. So this extension required is a 3D analysis and spatial analysis extension. To know further on this, uh, again, uh, we can actually discuss through uh, more detail. Uh, just reaching out to us, uh, send us an email or put a consultation on this. So we can actually do the demo uh, in detail uh, with you. Yep. Okay, Thank you. we have third question. Fire and hotspot monitoring. Okay, so can we also use this map to identify forest fire hotspots in our concession areas? If so, are there ways we can use the technology to mitigate any potential forest fire? Yep, yeah, this, this is a good question. So of course, uh, hotspot is something that uh, we actually uh, receive the signal from the satellite images. So this uh, data is actually uh, made available to public uh, through the NASA satellite Terra and Aqua. And in the living areas, we, we are actually can uh, ingest all this data directly to our platform to do uh, our hotspot monitoring. And uh, the, the good thing about this hotspot monitoring, monitoring is to actually give you alert where is the potential area based on the heat index that they are actually monitor. So from there, uh, ground, uh, ground, uh, ground truding is still required for you to see uh, whether the, this heat, heat index is actually referring, uh, referring to the potential open burning activity or not. So then it is something that uh, self-regulation, then you actually, uh, detect early the hotspot, then you go to the ground to actually mitigate them and put off the fire. So it will allow you uh, to control on your open burning activity and it will not spread uh, as a forest fire in 
in in in in in the in the un uncontrollable way. So I think Malaysia is actually doing quite good on this. So a lot of company they already uh, using this kind of data to to serve as an early uh, warning to for them to actually execute the ground truthing uh, uh, activity. So of course this is uh, applicable to the forest concession uh, in the set, using the same uh, method. So I hope that uh, I answer your question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lo. By the way, just to double confirm, uh, you will be sharing a link at the chat panel, is it? Or your team will be sharing it? So that uh, yeah. Dennis can reach to you, yeah. I think uh, my team uh, member can actually share the link uh, to the chat panel. Okay. So okay, for sure. that, uh, for us to uh, put the consultation slot if they, they intended to know more on the technology. Yeah, so that if let's say attendees that have any inquiry, they can reach to you directly. Yes. So yeah, that's all for Mr. Luke's side. Thank you very much for your sharing. And now, without further waiting, let us welcome Mr. Mohammad Zafrullah Salim from Saim Dabi Plantation Research Centre in Berhad. So he will conduct some testimonial sharing, which the presentation is titled "Empowering IoT in Oil Palm Industry Through GIS." So, Mr. Mohammad Zafrullah, the floor is yours. Hi. Right, thanks, Benny. So. First off, let me share my screen. Right. Okay, um, so uh, hello everyone and welcome to the session. Uh, I will be talking about empowering IoT in oil pump industry through GIS. And I will be focusing on weather data IoT from Samdabi Plantation owns experience. Okay, to start off, let us uh, take a look at our palm oil industry. The worldwide palm oil consumption for the last past five years has been increasing. And this trend will continue to do so as the world population uh, keep on increasing as projected by the United Nations. And uh, among other vegetable oils uh, in the world, palm oil is the largest uh, vegetable oil being consumed. And in terms of land use and production, oil palm produce way more compared to other oil crops and with less planted areas, right? So here uh, at Samdabi, we have close to 600,000 hectares of he uh, oil palm planted uh, that span across four different countries, including Malaysia, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, and Solomon Islands. And we are the world's largest producer of uh, certified sustainable palm oil. And the challenge is that uh, we're able to meet the increasing demand uh, in the next 30 years, as projected by United Nations, the population keep on increasing. And it's certainly exploring new land is not an option. And therefore, we need to grow our crop more efficiently than ever before. So with that, uh, Samdabi Plantation established a precision agriculture unit since 1997. And the role of this unit is basically to provide uh, reliable geospatial solutions, uh, along with the current technologies, uh, to improve Samdabi Plantation operational efficiency for effective decision making, right? Talking about current technologies, let's talk about the current uh, industrial revolution. Uh, we've came a long way since uh, 1700s, starting from steam technology to electricity to computing, and now it's all about connectivity. And the fourth industrial revolution is basically the ongoing automation process of the conventional uh, industrial practice with machine to machine communication and IoT has been a forefront. So uh, with uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0 came along Agriculture 4.0 that highlighted the sustainability, quality, protecting the environment, and reducing waste and costs in terms of uh, agriculture production. And the, agric uh, and the agriculture sector right now is uh, going through digital transformation. And on top of that, uh, the COVID-19 outbreak has showcased the true value of the digitalization in the sector. And there was a surge amount of investment, especially in agriculture technology for the past few years. And this report is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, speaking about iceberg, one of the key issues that has been highlighted in agriculture 4.0 is the climate change. How does climate change impact our industry? According to a climate change report in 2017, the uncertainty of weather condition has risen the frequency of droughts and floods that will affect our crops. And the rise of sea level will greatly affect our coastal areas. 
And our pollinators also are at a greater risk of being exposed to new diseases. Not to mention the pest and disease is also expected to be more aggressive than ever. And all of this uh, will result in our uh, crop, uh, a loss of crop yield, right? So how do we tackle all of the issue that has been highlighted in Agriculture 4.0? By focusing more on precision agriculture. And with the current available technology, such as drone, big data analytics, internet of things, and artificial intelligence, we can utilize them to better understand the output practices and understand what changes can be made to generate the greatest value. And today I'll be focusing more on GIS and IoT. And let's talk a bit about GIS technology. Uh, back then, when GIS was first introduced, GIS is basically a tool uh, only meant for the professionals, meaning that uh, you need to have a certain level of knowledge or certified knowledge to be, be, to be able to use it. Fast forward to today, GIS technology has been part of, of our daily life without we even notice. Right? My point here is that we can see the evolution of GIS technology coming from a tool that is exclusively for professionals to being available for everyone to use. The second thing is the Internet of Things or IoT. So IoT is short for Internet of Things. And it is basically a system of interrelated physical objects, or as we call things. So these physical objects have the ability to transfer data over a network without requiring human to human or human to human to computer interaction. So how does it work? So let me give you an example. Let's say we have a, a weather station with embedded uh, sensors with it installed in a field. So all these sensors will automatically record all the weather data and transmit via IoT gateway and store it in a cloud storage, right? So this data in this cloud storage will then be analyzed and visualized to be consumed by the users via the mobile devices. Very straightforward, right? So what is so great about uh, GIS and IoT anyways? Uh, before I get into that, let me explain to you how we conventionally record weather data before IoT came into the scene. So this, uh, the picture on the right is uh, an example of a rain gauge, which is a device to record uh, rainfall data. And basically, a recorder, a person or a recorder, have to physically be there every day at a designated time to check whether or not there's a presence of water or precipitation in this rain gauge. And if so, uh, the recorder have to remove uh, the rain gauge carefully without spilling any waters and pour it into the measuring cylinder and measure it and record it in this form, all right? Then uh, we've transitioned into using semi-automated weather station. So with this weather station, we don't have to physically be there every day to collect the data because uh, this weather station have all the weather sensors embedded with it and automatically record all the data into a data logger. But the thing with data logger is that it has limited so a limited storage capacity that can store up to seven or eight days worth of weather data. So we still need to go and retrieve the data every week. Uh, and another caveat uh, uh, for this weather station is that we could not monitor the status of the battery for the weather station. And it happened to me multiple times whenever I went to retrieve the data, the battery of the weather station has been dead for a few days. And this has prompted me to visit the weather station frequently. Then we transition into uh, the automated weather station with IT connection. So with this weather station, we don't even have to physically be there to retrieve the data because all the data that has been recorded is being stored in a cloud storage and we can view it uh, in this designated web page, right? But the thing about this web page is that only one person, uh, obviously the person in charge, only one person can view and manage it uh, at a time. And this designated web page uh, is meant only to uh, monitor and manage the weather station, whether or not the weather station is doing fine and so on. And it's not meant for visualization and also sharing. And to sum, to sum it up, the conventional way of uh, we're doing uh, of uh, recording weather data required trained personnel because it has to be manually measured, right? And mentioning about manually measured, there is a tendency to have human error in it. And that being said, it led to data integrity issue. Um, to be frank, I have witnessed how uh, the, the rainfall data being recorded without even going to the rain gauge itself. And uh, another thing worth mentioning is that uh, most of the time, all these rain gauge are poorly maintained. Right? And the location of this rain gauge itself is not suitable to collect rainfall. 
So all of this will amount to the inaccuracy of the data itself. And even so, all the data that has been recorded are often not fully utilized. So coming back to the question, what is so great about IoT and GIS? So this is the answer. Uh, with both IoT and GIS, we could uh, develop a weather monitoring dashboard that ensure all of the issues be taken care of. Right? But with this, uh, it is only meaningful if it's being shared and consumed by the stakeholders, right? Uh, especially those in the estate operation, the agronomists and crop protectionists. Right? And therefore, we have created a single geospatial platform called SMART. So with this uh, platform, we can share all the data in this platform and uh, all the departments within the organization can access to the data anytime, anywhere. And we are more interconnected to each other than ever. And this does ensure data integrity, it improves transparency across departments and also avoid duplication. Right? And one of the things that we've developed uh, is the Smart Agronomy Hub. And basically, uh, people on the ground can report or log any issues that they found uh, using their mobile devices. And we have also developed this uh, vitality index dashboard uh, to assist them and predetermine the areas that they need to visit. Okay. And the latest addition to this uh, agronomic hub is this weather monitoring dashboard. So I'm going to give you uh, a demonstration of this dashboard. Right. So right off the bat, uh, we can see all these weather panels here. And we have a map of the location of our weather station. And the left side of the dashboard, we have the station list and a big panel here that shows total active stations and also this heat index gauge panel. All right, so let me proceed by selecting one of the states. So I'm going to pick this to Sudan Estates. All right, immediately, all of the weather panels have changed uh, according to the, the states that uh, I've picked. Right? And we go to this left side of the dashboard so we can see a quick overview of uh, the hourly data that has been captured for the day. Right? And we also have this heat index gauge for this particular estate. Well, for, for those who don't know, heat index is basically a measurement of uh, temperature that combines with relative humidity, meaning that high heat index indicates that area is very hot and very humid. So for this particular estate, we have, uh, and this heat index gauge, we have classified to three uh, classes, which is the low, medium, and high heat index class. And for this particular estate, it is within the low, uh, range of heat index, so uh, nothing to be worried. And um, before I forgot to mention that this, all this weather uh, information is in real time and it's being automatically updated hourly, right? And to give you a brief example of how important this real-time data is, um, let's say for example, uh, we are going, going through a wet season, right? So during wet season, we have a threshold of how many rainfall that we can receive in order for us to decide whether or not to continue monitoring for the next day. Right? Uh, if it exceeds 25 millimeter uh, of rainfall, then we should stop monitoring for the next day. Imagine if we don't have real-time real -time data and we need to rely on uh, rain gauge. We need, uh, if we rely on rain gauge, we need to wait at least the next day for the next day until the recorder have recorded the rainfall data only then we can decide whether or not to continue monitoring. But with real-time data right now, as I demonstrate here, um, so this is the latest one, 4 p.m. I can decide right here, right now, oh, today, uh, those of the estate have no rainfall, so we can continue uh, monitoring for tomorrow, right? So it's, it's as easy as that, uh, so that we can, uh, especially those in the estate operation, uh, can manage their resource and schedule ahead uh, uh, the task for, for the next day, right? And uh, if you notice that all of these weather panels have a pattern panel behind it. So this is basically, let me enlarge it, uh, the historical pattern of the weather data. So for this, we have uh, rainfall data for the, for the, uh, since the beginning of the year, that for the whole year. And we have a time slider here, so you can slide to any specific time you want, right? So what we can do with this piece of information is that we can compare this with our yield performance, for example, right? So that we can see if there any effect of our yield performance in relation to weather changes. Okay, and we could also uh, apply that in pests and disease. So for example, we have the threshold here that says that if it receives less than 
26 degrees Celsius, then uh, uh, the possibility of a vacuum outbreak is there. So um, with this piece of information, uh, it, it, we want to create the awareness, uh, the operation awareness, so that people on the ground are aware uh, on the, the current condition of the weather uh, in their respective estates, right? So they can make necessary adjustment if they need to, okay? And one other thing uh, that I want to highlight is that we have this uh, battery level uh, status that we can monitor uh, because we do have uh, incidents where uh, one of our uh, weather station, for example here, uh, battery status suddenly dropped, so we can alert uh, the people in this in in that respective estate to go and take a look at it. Right? And uh, another thing that I want to highlight in this dashboard is that we have this heat map. So this heat map is basically an overview of uh, the, the current condition, uh, current weather condition across our estates. And for this heat map, uh, we are using heat index as an indicator. And you can use whatever weather parameter that you want. If you want to have an overview of uh, the rainfall across the estate, you can. Right? And another thing that I want to highlight is that this early warning uh, map. So basically, this map is a, a, a tool for us to identify which of our estate that receive or suffer through an extreme range of uh, weather condition in a, certain, uh, in a certain period of time, right? Okay, so for example here, I'm going to monitor heat index, right? Uh, for the last two weeks, so I'm going to set it to the last two weeks, right? And then let's set... Uh, from 50 to maximum, right? So when we click here, we get a figure of, oh, okay, we have five estate that have been uh, receiving this extreme uh, level of heat index. And when we click this warning list, it shows us which estates and when do they receive this uh, extreme heat index measurement, right? And again, this piece of information creates awareness so that people on the ground uh, can be alert and make necessary adjustment. Uh, for example, to check, to frequently check their water level, or so on and so forth, right? And uh, for this dashboard, we also have in a mobile version. So uh, to cater for those uh, who are working in the field, right? So basically works the same, choose any estate they want, and all the function will show up, right? Although it lacks the function and features as the desktop version, but it is enough for them on the ground to get by. And again, this dashboard can be accessible to everyone within the organization through our smart uh, uh, hub, right? So with both of this uh, IoT and GIS, it opens up a lot of possibilities, right? And as I mentioned earlier that the data collected are often not fully utilized. So this is how we can fully utilize uh, all the collected data that we can develop a yield forecasting uh, model, we can also uh, develop a pest and disease outbreak prediction model, right? And I noticed that we have this huge knowledge gap in the field uh, in using weather data in our farm plantation. And with the help of IoT and GIS, I think we, I believe we in the industry could fill this knowledge gap, right? And just to give you an example of how we can uh, utilize this IoT and GIS, uh, we can develop uh, an early warning system for, in this case, the example is the bedroom outbreak uh, uh, warning system, right? So with this, uh, uh, with IoT data and a bit of help from artificial intelligence, we are able to come up with this uh, warning system uh, with high accuracy, right? And then uh, this piece of information is very useful for those uh, in a state operation uh, because it gives uh, an ample time for them to manage their mitigation effort and also a perfect window for them to execute uh, their mitigation efforts, right? And imagine that if we can put this information or this system within the dashboard and the dashboard, uh, uh, if we put this information within the dashboard and it could notify the users whenever there will be an outbreak so that the people on the ground can be notified uh, if all this weather condition has been met and there will be an outbreak, right? So they can prepare and uh, execute their mitigation efforts, right? 
And imagine if we pair that with location intelligence, which is GIS or GIS technology, we could pinpoint the exact location on where to execute the treatment rather than blanketly applied to all the field. And this is how we can harness both IoT and GIS, the power of both IoT and GIS. Um, and in turn, it will reduce cost, reduce time, and increase the efficiency of the mitigation efforts and overall improve sustainability. Right. So uh, what have been demonstrated and showcased uh, in relation, uh, regarding IoT and GIS, I hope it can be uh, an eye opener or could enlighten all of the audience here today. And uh, we have to admit that precision agriculture is the future of farming. And the way the, con uh, the, the conventional ways of doing things for all this while has its flaw and has put the industry in the comfort zone. And to my personal experience, we have been in this comfort zone for far too long. And from now on, we need to change things. And I know, and I very well understood that change can be scary and change can be difficult. But in order for our industry to prosper and be relevant in many more years to come, that change is necessary. And I personally wish that everyone in the industry can be on board in enabling agriculture 4.0 so that no one gets left behind in this fast-paced technology era. And with that note, I'll end my presentation today. Thank you. Back to you, Vinny. Thank you, Mr. Mohammad Zafrula. Yes, I guess the only constant is change, right? Okay, so now let us move to the Q&A session. Um, let us see what is the first question from the audience. Okay, so what were some of the challenges faced by Sam Darby that prompt them to use GIS? Um, uh, okay, if I wanted to choose, I think um, it started when we trying to replace uh, hand-drawn mapping to printed mapping. I think that's the start of uh, the use, the spark uh, that's from us to use the GIS uh, right now. I think that's and it started from that, it started to snowball uh, the use of GIS until today. And because of this hand-drawn mapping, uh, we were wondering why couldn't we print this map rather than hand-drawn, right? So in order to produce a digital map, in order to produce printed map, we have to digitalize the hand-drawn map. And in order to digitalize hand-drawn map, we need to use GIS technology. And therefore, I think that's for probably the, the biggest reason that prompted uh, Simdabi in using GIS technology. So I guess first question uh, is done answering. Yeah. Okay, so next question. How did you promote the use of GIS technology to a wide variety of stakeholders and users? Um, I think the best way in promoting uh, what we want to promote is to let the users get a taste of it. And for our case at SMW is that uh, we uh, introduced them uh, to a PDF map, uh, a printed map that has been transformed into a PDF version with all the geospatial component in it. And uh, we also introduced a few mobile uh, application that can read this PDF map and act as a navigator uh, for them to navigate in this field. So um, when we introduced them to this, you know, words travel fast and suddenly everyone wanted to use. So this is how we promote uh, the use of GIS technology. And also we introduce uh, Google Earth to them so that we, when we provide all the re relevant data, such as uh, the estate boundaries, uh, field boundaries, road layers, so they can, you know, uh, they can do them themselves, they overlay all the data themselves and uh, they can also analyze what they need to uh, with all of this uh, uh, GIS technology. And uh, forgot to mention that uh, when we introduce them to this uh, mobile application and web application, all of them are, are free to download. So it is easier for them to use and to access and to utilize fully uh, using this GIS technology. And, and ultimately, I think through our smart uh, agronomy hub, I think this is one way that uh, uh, that we can promote a GIS technology across different departments, whether you are in finance department or anywhere within the organization, uh, so that uh, with this uh, uh, smart agronomy hub, 
uh, in return will showcase the importance of GIS technology and also provide useful information to the stakeholders and users. Okay, thank you, Mr. Muhammad Zafrula. Oh yeah, we still have third question. So what has Sam Darby achieved so far with precision agriculture and what is your view about this digital in the near future? Um, with precision agriculture, actually, uh, the achievement that we have with precision agriculture can be divided into three different uh, categories. Uh, one is science, uh, data, and also technology. So first about science is that um, precision, with precision agriculture, we've managed to develop many things. Uh, have you uh, seen earlier that with our vitality index dashboard, we also have our palm counting model uh, using uh, high resolution satellite image or drones. And we also have multispectral imaging and extracting all the spectral profile of unhealthy palms can monitor the health of the palm, uh, even measure the height and the size of the crown, right? So that's the science part that managed to achieve. And in data part is basically digitalize all the geospatial data, right? And also we have transition in terms of uh, using pen and papers by using mobile devices, right? So it's much more convenient. And third is about the technology. So technology that I've showcased just now is through the dashboard, the web app applications, right? And eventually all of these uh, science, data, and technology uh, will eventually be shared to our smart algorithm hub and so that everyone can have access to it. And my personal view in regards of uh, digital in the near future is that this digitalization is the next big thing. Um, I'm sorry, it's not the next big thing. It is the biggest thing now and it is happening soon uh, as we expected, right? And also I've mentioned that precision agriculture is the future of farming. And I think with digitalization in the industry, it gives us more control of the crops so that we're able to adapt, predict, and proactively act according to uh, the environmental changes. And ultimately, uh, it helps us in, make, uh, in making well-informed decisions, right? So I hope that um, this, uh, we, we could uh, bend together and uh, undergo this digital transformation together uh, within the industry uh, so that uh, we can be more uh, relevant uh, in the near future. So, um, yeah, so we're done for question three. Yep. Okay. And yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Mohammad Zafrullah. So ladies and gentlemen, our webinar has come to an end and thank you everyone for your participation. So if you have any inquiries, welcome to write, your, write to our general email or uh, yeah, our team will liaise with you accordingly, okay? So feel free to visit our website at www.asia-palmoil.com for more information about us. Also, welcome to follow us on web, Facebook and link it at Asia Palm Oil Magazine to get the latest information of news. Last but not the least, here is the good news for all the participants. Do you remember what I've mentioned about the lucky draw at the beginning of the webinar? So here it is. Fill in this post-event survey now. So enter the lucky draw competition to win Jabra 85T earbuds. Whoa. So can you scan this QR code or you may click on the link provided at the Zoom chat panel to fill in the survey form. So the lucky draw winners will be informed by Astream Malaysia in 15 working days after this webinar. Okay. So guys, you either you can scan this QR code or you can get a link. Enter the lucky draw. So again, appreciate Dr. Ahmad Paris, Mr. Luke, and Mr. Muhammad Zafrullah for spending your precious time with us. And thank you everyone for your time as well.